Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in to Test 2 Plus again today for episode 3 of 5 on cloning. Make sure you check out tomorrow's episode. Make sure you subscribe because we have a guest coming in. We're going to talk about the ethics of cloning. But yesterday, we talked about when we started doing it and how we perfected it. We have also talked about in a previous episode this week how cloning happens naturally. It's a natural process, so make sure you check out both of those episodes. Today, though, we're talking about the present and future of cloning, you know, post-Dolly and, and what's going on now. Now that we know that the technology exists and that the people, the scientists out there are experimenting with artificial cloning, what are people going to do with it? You know, what can we use this for? There are a couple of main reasons that we want to clone. One big one is medicine. Notably, people have been using cloning to create new human stem cells. We mentioned stem cells a little bit earlier. Stem cells have been put forth as a new exciting cure for all sorts of cool stuff. Stem cells are essentially like the seeds of all cells. They are undifferentiated biological cells. They can grow into whatever they're programmed to become. Uh, you know, boop, you, can, you want a liver? Here's some stem cells. Boop, liver. You know, boop, skin. Boop, whatever. The possibilities are pretty endless with stem cells and what they can be, and that means that they can be used, if done properly, to repair damaged tissues in your body, to regrow new lungs or livers or hearts or, you know, whatever. They can also be used to treat diabetes, Parkinson's, muscular dystrophy. I mean, so many different things. This is called therapeutic cloning or somatic cell nuclear transfer. An unfertilized egg is isolated and the nucleus is removed just like anything else, right? It's in a nucleated egg that's been unfertilized. Once you remove the nucleus, what you're doing is you're removing the control center of the cell, but also the genetic material that tells that cell what it can be. You replace that nucleus with maybe a skin cell nucleus, and then you insert that into an egg, and you're essentially putting the genetic material from yourself into the egg. Once you've done that, the egg is stimulated, it divides, it can be used to create all sorts of stuff, and if it's inserted into a womb, it could potentially develop. But instead of letting it develop into an embryo, in the lab, scientists encourage it to split and divide and divide, and then it creates stem cells. Those stem cells in nature would go on to develop a human or whatever it is that you're cloning. But if you take those, you can add them to the body to repair tissues, to cure diseases. And it has nothing to do really with making a baby or with reproduction in general. It's done because your body can use these stem cells naturally. Your body is also though built to be wary of foreign intruders, right? That's why you have an immune system. So if you were to put someone else's stem cells inside of your body, there's a good chance that your immune system would attack them and reject that cell. It's sort of like a transplant. You know, people who have a heart transplant have to take drugs which suppress their immune response forever. But if they had a heart grown for them out of their own genes and transplanted into them, it's your genetic material. Theoretically, it should work just fine. You wouldn't attack it. If someone is sick, you could use stem cells with the same genes to grow organs or fix problems with their body, and their body should leave them alone, ideally and that way the body can focus on healing and repairing rather than attacking. Therapeutic cloning is actually banned in some countries though. It's highly regulated all around the world with good reason. I mean, you're essentially creating a pre-embryo for a human and those are highly regulated in ethically gray areas in some places. For instance, in England it's legal, but the embryo has to be destroyed after 14 days or a fortnight. And reproductive cloning on humans uh, is you'd have to put that cloned embryo inside of a womb, which I already mentioned, but that's actually banned in most countries. Although, funnily enough, it's not technically illegal in the United States because no laws have been passed saying that you can't do that. However, there have been laws passed saying you can't fund things that do that. So de facto, but if somebody privately wanted to fund it, they might be able to. The legality of this goes into the ethics of this, which we're going to talk about later. But it's an expensive process and it doesn't always work and research is ongoing, you know, more research is always needed. But there are also some doing research on cloning human cells just to grow new organs from them. Uh, that cloning technology could be also used to clone animals that have organs that have been genetically modified so that they can be transplanted into humans. For example, you could use uh, a pig to grow a liver 
that could be transplanted into a human. We live in the future. It's kind of a creepy, gross future sometimes. Speaking of animals, um, there's another use for cloning where farmers and ranchers would use reproductive cloning on their livestock. Uh, they're using things like artificial insemination already, in vitro fertilization, and all sorts of kind of artificial means of managing the reproductive processes of the animals that we use on farms and in agriculture. But some are cloning their best animals, their biggest beef cows, their best dairy producers, etc. And breeders take the best traits from a male and a female to get an offspring that inherits those traits. That's natural breeding, right? It's, that's animal husbandry. You take two horses, they both you know, run fast and are strong or whatever, you breed them together, and then you hope that the offspring can do that. Well, if you can do this on the genetic level, you can just say, oh, well, these are the genes for running fast, and these are the genes for having you know, strong bones, so we'll put those in there make a strong animal. This is also something we can do called somatic cell nuclear transfer. It's been mainly used so far to increase the quality of herds. Um, however, I think I remember reading that some racehorses are being cloned or parts of their genes have been harvested so that they can use them for other things. Um, but they can also clone animals that, say, fight off disease better. So we don't have to use as many antibiotics. They can clone animals that have higher yields. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration did a report in 2008 that said cloned meat and milk is completely safe to eat, but Europe voted against cloning animals for meat in 2015, so who knows where this is going to go. It's all kind of up in the air at this point. Another idea for cloning in animals that you've probably heard of is cloning animals to bring them back from extinction. Everybody wants to bring back the mammoth. It's a very famous case of people wanting to bring back extinct species. We've talked about this on some other episodes. Make sure you check those out. But you can also clone passenger pigeons. The Tasmanian tiger, the moa, uh, the Pyrenean ibex was actually already cloned, but the cloned offspring only lived seven minutes. So it's Still kind of not, not great. There's a project called the Frozen Ark, uh, which is saving all the DNA of thousands of different species just in case of another mass extinction, which we might be in the middle of, extinction series. I'm just plugging things left and right here. But it's not likely that we will see any cloned woolly mammoths anytime soon, but what we do have are cloned pets. Companies have already sprung up which clone your pet for you. The first pet a cat named Little Nicky was cloned in 2004. It cost $50,000, but some people have spent over 100000 to clone all Rover. Cloning is also common in horticulture. Mentioned this earlier. Uh, we've talked about how plants clone naturally, but and people have been doing that for a long, long time. It's a natural process of plants, and it's often used in vegetables and fruits. You can put flowers like orchids and clone those, roses, clone those. Uh, you can even clone grapevines so that you have consistently good wine. We know cloning's possible. It's already a reality. But what's it gonna look like? What's gonna happen in the future? You know, like most things in science and technology, cloning is gonna be cheaper, faster, more accessible as things move forward. So is the world gonna go all Gattaca or are we gonna go somewhere else? So just because we can clone something doesn't mean that we should, right? Should we? We'll talk about that tomorrow with our special guest. We've got Craig here from the channel Wheezy Waiter. He's here, and he'll be here tomorrow on Test2 Plus. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Questions, answers.